The next speaker coming to the Living City stage is the Executive Director of Vibrant Communities Calgary. She brings a diverse range of experience in collective impact and policy change to the role, having directed numerous domestic violence and mental health organizations across North America. Please put your hands together for Megan Reed. So I know two things for sure since 7.30. One is I'm super proud to live in a city with Larissa and Alice and Amy. And the second thing I know is that I'm gonna need one of Larissa's pastries in the next like 24 hours. Because <laughs> they just look so good. Um, and since I'm between you and the beer break, I'm gonna get started. This is my dog, Nico. She's 20 years old, 20. <laughs> and for those of you who are not dog owners, that is like really, really old, um, Yoda old. She is my city navigator and for the record has successfully outlasted every romantic relationship I have ever been in. <laughs> and when you are this old, you've earned a sudden and irrational fear of walking on sidewalks and you make your owner drive you to Riley Park, which is six minutes from our house as a drive or a for, as a walk or a 30 second drive. And if you are a cyclist in this audience, I'm really sorry. But this does put us in the parking lot at Riley Park a couple of times a day. In an outing of ours last week, I saw a mom call her two kids, they seemed to be under 10 years old, uh, to come to the van because it was time for bed. And when Nico and I were walking by, we noticed the van was open and there was a mattress and some piles of clothes. Um, and it was fairly evident that these kids and their mom were living in that van. So this got me to thinking, what does it mean to be in a living city if in fact people don't have places to live? How did we get here? And more importantly, is this the version of our living city that we need to accept? Calgary, like many other cities, faces a housing crisis that isn't just a news headline. It's the reality for a lot of families, 234 families tonight to be exact, like the ones I saw at Riley Park. Families who are homeless and can't even access a shelter tonight because they are too full. And as we sit here in this beautiful theater, there are 5,000 families who are precariously housed. So that means they're doing things like couch surfing or overcrowding, who are on a wait list for affordable housing. And maybe you are one of those people um, because you saw your rent rise as much as 40% in the past year. Or maybe you're one of those people because you only have access to a sliver of the market because you don't make $87,000 annually. Or maybe you are one or know of one of the people who live on the edges of the Bow River, the encampment outside the DI, or who call the C train home. And there's a lot of people that are doing that right now and living that way in our city. But maybe you're also that family that I saw at Riley Park who are living in vans, and not in that like hashtag van life sort of way that we hear about, right? And I'm sucked in by that too, but if you're living this way and waking up without having a meal or a kitchen or a shower, that's really hard. I'm like super popular at dinner parties. Can you tell? <laughs> so, so how did we get here? We, that's all of us, we've made some choices, folks. Um, I have been the contributor to the boring and confusing factoids that we lose ourselves in, but simply put, we value places for our cars to sleep over places for our neighbors to sleep. Every car in this city has three spaces to go to sleep, that's park, at night, but there's no beds left in our shelters. We really love our single family dwellings and would rather build out instead of up. And because of Larissa's pastry, that is also my diet regime, out instead of up. <laughs> but folks, we are running out of space. Do you know that Calgary is the same size as New York City, like with the boroughs even, with one sixth of the population? Last time I checked, New York City, not a bad place to live. We've primarily come to view homes as investments first and not something that's a right because housing is indeed a human right. How many people knew that? Just clap if you knew it was a right. Yes, housing is a human right. And we got here because for those of us who are settlers, we violently removed the ability for elders and knowledge keepers of this beautiful land that we get to call home 
to guide its future. We've lost sight of the fact that we have to have the most vibrant and beautiful and living city we can, we need people to actually live in the city. But here's the good news. See, it's lightening up. Here's the good news. <laughs> we got to make different choices, all of us here. We decided how we got here, and we can decide where we want to be. I came here straight from City Hall, where our counselors are making some pretty critical decisions. Right now, they're still talking about the city we want to be in. And amidst the acronym soup of like RCG and all of that, and NIMBYism are the powerful testimonies of people living in this city of ours, but they're not living well. 100,000 of us in this city have nothing left to trade off and are one missed paycheck away from homelessness. 100,000. But I am of the firm belief that in a crisis, things that are unimaginable become imaginable again, if just for a moment. And right now is one of those moments. And we are sharing that moment together. So what if we together solve some of our root causes of this issue, not by looking at the economics of it, but by rooting to a new way of being? of prioritizing people over cars, vitality over profit, and defining our living city as one where everybody can live well. Everybody. And if we want to, in the lifespan of an aging Dachshund named Nico, we could have kids that wake up in homes and not in vans. We can enjoy the river instead of having to live beside it because it's safer than a shelter. We can become um, and have enough income for everyone to enjoy the city instead of just being a spectator. And we can change our patterns of connections of everything we use from transit to how we relate to one another. We can change generations in what's happening in the next three days in our city. That's terrifying and exciting, but we can do that. And if we do that, the parking lot of Riley Park can just be a parking lot, or maybe it could be a residence, or a community hub, or more park. But it certainly wouldn't be a home. And we get to do this together. Our living city is only as strong as the people living in it, fighting for the city we want, so that when Nico is 40 years old, we are proud to live here. Thank you. Thank you, Megan.